So what we're going to talk about here is the basic idea of how post spill flow compensation works. But before we talk about that, we're going to talk about why we need it. And for our example here, we're going to take a look at a pump that's got uh, 10 gallon a minute flow output. And that pump is trying to operate two circuits simultaneously. And those two circuits, whatever it is they're hooked up to, and just for the sake of simplicity, let's say that it's two motors, okay? So those two motors, if the motors had the exact same load on them, they would turn at the same speed and it would divide the flow evenly. The only problem is it's, it's pretty difficult to have two hydraulic motors hooked up like this in parallel and have them operate at exactly the same speed with the exact same load on them. The only way this would work is if maybe you had, uh, and it's not the most realistic thing in the world, but let's say maybe you had something like a draper and you had two motors running the canvas, right? And those two motors running the canvas there, they're tied together. So they are actually encountering the same load. That's not normally the case though. So maybe we've got one over here that's operating and it's got sufficient load to generate a thousand PSI of, of uh, pressure drop across it. The other one has got sufficient load to generate 2000 PSI of pressure drop across it. It's pretty easy to see right now that there's no way the oil flow is going to be evenly split between these two loads. Oil always takes the path of least resistance and that means my oil flow is going to follow this path and we're probably going to end up with something that looks like this. That's not what we want. Okay, we want to keep both of those turning at the same speed. So the only way to do that is to stop the easy side from taking all the oil flow, put some restriction in there. If I put some restriction in there, I can also put a restrictor on the other side and just leave it wide open, okay? And if I leave the other side wide open, that means this restrictor here is gonna have how much pressure drop across it? It's gonna have zero. There's not gonna be any pressure drop across this restrictor, but if I have the other restrictor choking off the flow to the easy circuit so it doesn't steal all of the flow, then we're gonna create a pressure drop across this side of a thousand PSI. Now what this does is it effectively means that the oil is still seeing 2000 PSI to go into either leg of the circuit. And now we can still end up with equal flow from side to side. So this right here, this illustrates why we use post uh, spool flow compensation uh, in certain applications. It's so that we don't have easy circuits stealing all of the flow. And if we end up in a situation where maybe we could demand more flow than the pump is uh, capable of producing, once again, it doesn't just go all to the easy circuits. Um, it's going to be evenly distributed and it's gonna function kind of like a flow divider. And if we evenly distribute this flow uh, between the circuits, then they're all able to function. Okay, so we're continuing on here, uh, looking at a comparison between a simple flow divider and this uh, post spool flow compensating system uh, in a very simple schematic right here. The idea here is on a simple flow divider, you've got a spool and that spool is going to move based on the pressure on either side of it. So with this flow divider right here, if the pressure on outlet one is greater than the pressure on outlet two, the spool is gonna wanna shift over. When the spool shifts over because of the pressure building up on this side of it, it's gonna start restricting the flow. I'm gonna change my pen color so we can really see what I'm doing here. Okay. 
So it's going to start restricting the flow on the other side. The higher pressure circuit restricts flow to the lower pressure circuit. And the reason that it does that on a simple flow divider is so that all of the oil flow doesn't just take the path of least resistance and dump itself off through the easy circuit. So this is a very simplistic application um, and it works well, but it really only works if you're trying to split flow into two different circuits. With post-spool flow compensation, we can have way more than two circuits. In the example we're gonna look at here though, we're just looking at a single circuit. So how does this work? It says that we've got pressure compensator valves after the spool valves. So these uh, pressure compensator valves, they're acting like restrictors to control flow. And those pressure compensator valves are going to be directly after our directional control valves or spool valves. It says right here as well that the highest load sense uh, pressure is used to control the pump, but it's also used to help close the restrictors, those pressure compensator valves. It says that by doing this, flow is divided proportionally to the actuators. The easy way to, uh, to figure this out is just start slapping some numbers on it and see how it works. Now, we've got a couple of different uh, pressures here. We've got motor A and motor B, 800 and 400. So we'll assign some pressures over here. And that's just representing the load that we have in each of those circuits. And it says my pump output is sitting at 1100 PSI. So my pump output's at 1100 PSI and the highest load in the system is 800 PSI. That right there tells me that my load sense pressure coming back to my pump is gonna be sitting at 800 PSI because load sense is work port pressure and the job of the shuttle valve is to send the highest work port pressure back to the pump. So the pump is gonna make whatever the highest pressure is in the system plus the differential pressure, the margin pressure. So that means that we've got this system set up according to our numbers to give us 300 PSI of differential pressure or margin. The spring tension on the load sense spool in this particular example, 300 PSI. All right. If I want both of these circuits to operate, pump output has to go through both of the valves. But what do you notice? You notice that my flow controls, and you can think of these as restrictors because that's really all that they are. That's what they're doing. They're just acting like restrictors. So you'll notice that both of them are closed. So that means that the pump output isn't going anywhere until those valves open. What is it that opens them up? It is pilot pressure. All right, the pilot pressure pushes those open. We've got a 50 PSI spring value right here. I got 50 pounds of spring force trying to hold that thing closed. And I've got some oil pressure from the pump trying to open it up. Okay, now is it just 50 pounds of spring force trying to hold those flow controls closed? No, we've also got load sense going to those as well. So in this case here, I've got 850 PSI of, of pressure trying to hold these flow controls shut. My pump has got 1100 PSI. And there you go, that's how they open. If I got more pump pressure, it's gonna open up these valves and now my oil can carry on to my loads. So if that's how this works, then why even bother having them there? You might be wondering that, but take a look at this. We've got two different loads. We have a 400 PSI load and we have an 800 PSI load. 
the tendency is going to be for the 400 PSI load to start stealing flow. It's going to want to steal all the flow as soon as this valve opens. It's going to want to take all of the flow available. The thing that I didn't bring up yet, but I will now. Your directional control valves, your spool valves, as oil flows through that valve, it is going to act like a restriction to a certain degree, isn't it? So as the oil flows through this valve right here, it is gonna act like a restriction. And then as it flows through this valve right here, we can use the next, the second valve, the flow control valve uh, to start throttling flow so we don't steal all of it. Because once the DCV is open, it stays open. My flow control valve, that one, I can automatically throttle flow with that. How does that work? Well, let's take a look at that. So initially, when that uh, flow control valve first opened, it's just a restrictor, right? And it opened because it had 1,100 PSI of oil pressure from the pump pushing it open. But if it tries to steal too much flow, we're going to end up with a pressure drop after the DCV. We're trying to pull too much oil and the DCV is starting to act like a restriction here. And we're going to end up with a pressure drop after the DCV. And that pressure drop means we might end up with less than 1100 PSI available now to hold that flow control open. And if I start stealing too much flow and the pressure drops below 850 PSI after the DCV, this flow control valve right here, it's going to start throttling flow because I've got 850 PSI of pressure, that's 800 pounds of load sense from the heavy load in the system, holding it shut. And if it steals more flow than it's allowed and tries to create a pressure drop in the system, your post spool flow compensator valve is gonna start throttling that flow so that it can't steal more flow than it's allowed. And the whole time this is happening, the whole time we're throttling flow on the low side, the high side is just humming along happily because it's got enough pressure to stay open because it's not the one trying to steal all the oil. Okay. So far, this isn't terribly complicated in what we're doing here. We've basically just created a system that looks like this. And we automated the opening and closing of the restrictors. So you're only throttling the low, the low pressure side then, and not touching the high pressure at all. Yep, that's what it does. It automatically throttles the low side so that it doesn't steal all the oil. If you want to think about it in its very simplest form, that's exactly what's happening. Okay. We're going to take a look at... Uh, something that can happen here. So we have the same diagram. The only difference now is we're saying that we've stalled one of the circuits. So if I stall this circuit, but I still have you know that low pressure circuit that was trying to do its thing, let's take a look at what happens. If I stall this circuit here, at 2,500 PSI. And the reason it's stalled at 2,500 PSI is because that's what the PC spool is set to. So that means the pump can only make 2,500 PSI. So it came through here, came through here, got up here, stalled that motor. That sent a 2,500 PSI signal back through the load sense, which comes down here, okay? And it goes over to load sense spool on the pump, which you know, it's neither here nor there uh, at this point because it's not the load sense spool that's controlling the pump. It's the PC spool. But here's the problem, guys. I've got 2,500 PSI of oil pressure trying to close my flow controls. But I've also got 50 PSI of spring over here. So that means my flow controls have 2,550 pounds of force on one side and the maximum oil pressure coming from the pump is only 2,500 pounds on the other side. 
And that means that it doesn't matter that this low pressure side here could still take oil and use oil from the pump because we can't even get this flow control open on that side. If you stall one side, the other side stops too. All right. This, this is why we need that extra feature that we have on the wheel loader. In the wheel loader that we use uh, in class, we've got a pressure compensator spool. We've got a load sensing spool. And we also have a load sense signal relief. The load sense signal relief, it's tapped in right here. Okay. The load sense signal relief, we can use the load sense signal relief to still give us a maximum system pressure of 2,500 PSI if we want to. Uh, if our uh, differential pressure, our margin pressure, if we had a 300 pound spring tension on the load sense spool, what I could do is I could still give myself a 2,500 PSI max system pressure by setting a relief valve in the load sense to 2300 PSI and cranking my PC spool to maybe 3000 PSI. So here's what happens. The PC spool, it never controls the system anymore. It's only the load sense system that controls the, the, uh, the flow coming out of the system, the maximum pressure during operation and the stall pressure of the system as well. So now the pressure, yes, I've got 2,500 PSI in my uh, high pressure circuit. And in my high pressure circuit, that is gonna become my load sense signal. And I tie a relief valve into the load sense signal, 2,300 PSI plus 300 pounds of uh, load sense spring tension, that equals 2,500 PSI of pump output pressure. Still got it. So now, yes, I got 2,500 PSI acting on my flow control spools over here, but now I don't have 2,550 over here. I got 2,350 and I got 2,350, okay? But I still have 2,500 trying to open up both of those flow controls. And guess what? Flow control A is open because of that. Sure, the motor stalled and there's no flow going through it, but flow control B, it's open too. And circuit B continues to work. And the only reason that was able to happen is because we maintained our difference in pressure between pump output and load sense. Wouldn't that speed up circuit B though? Sure it would. If circuit B, if circuit B is receiving uh, pump flow now, um, and it's receiving all of it, it could theoretically speed that up. Yep. So this relief right here is a load sense signal relief. And when you see a load sense signal relief, it's typically there because you've got post spool flow compensation and we don't wanna have a situation where if we stall one circuit, everything else quits working. The reason it does that is because it lets us maintain that difference in pressure between pump output and whatever's in the load sense because load sense is also used to control those flow restrictors.